beautiful souls. I am so excited to guide you through today's five ways to radically change your life. Now, this might come off as an obvious, oh, well, everybody talks about that. But I'm going to walk you through the energetic, intuitive way of how these five experiences truly apply to your life. So it's probably nothing that you've heard before or a variation of it, but what I'm really going to support you in going deeper within is truly how the energy behind these changes radically help you change your life. And there's a big difference. So if we have never connected before, I'm going to start off with just a short introduction into who I am so we understand that this is the work that I love and do, and most importantly, truly where we're deriving this beautiful, beautiful experience together from. All right. So what we're going to cover today is who I am and my journey. I'm super excited to be here with you today. The first one of five ways to radically change your life, which is the influence of your energy. The second one is the capabilities you have to unlock growth. The third one is is the responsibility you have to truly improve your life, which is something that not a lot of people talk about. Number four is the compassion. That compassion holds the key to everything. And my fifth and final favorite one is visualization and execution. Let's dig in and get started. So who I am and my journey. So my name is Riley June. I'm an intuition master coach, which means that I teach people how to come back to that sacred gift of their language, of the language of their energy. Just like how we have this physical voice that you are hearing me speak through and that you're going to turn around today and talk to someone else with before we ever experience anything physically we feel and experience it energetically. And your intuition is the language that experiences and feels it and knows it and processes it all before we physically experience anything. My journey started in about 2016. I worked a bunch of different jobs in waitressing and real estate and all the things that I could get my hand on working and working hard and stacking all the cash was basically my goal for life. Cause I was promised this 60, 65, 70 years of working and then hopefully retiring in Arizona. And so that's just what I knew how to do energy, intuition, the universe, God, life, energy. It all didn't exist to me. I never thought about it. I didn't know about it. I just assumed that it existed and somehow we're all going through this life. And in 2016 to 2017, I lost someone very dear and close to me. My aunt, she was the glue to our family. And shortly after her passing, my husband was diagnosed with congenital heart failure. As I put on the smile to pretend I wasn't grieving and tried to keep my head up for my family while my husband was going through all these issues with his heart and needing heart surgeries. We found out we were pregnant with our son who also inevitably needed to have heart surgery at four months old. My husband went on to have three more heart surgeries because of infections, strokes, heart attacks, the whole nine yards, name it probably happened to him. And in what ended up being a two and a half stint of life, I did not know who I was anymore. Trauma had found me at my doorstep. Life was in that time happening to me, not for me. And I didn't understand how or why it all connected or even where I was going on the other side of it. But towards the middle of 2018, I found myself in this place of listening to people saying, finally, you can heal. The doctor said there's good news. Nobody has to worry about, you know, more complications or hard stuff or anything like that anymore. You can finally heal. And this word healing really stood out to me. And so I began diving into podcasts. We were broke. I needed to be his full-time caregiver, my son's full-time caregiver throughout this period of time. And I started digging into podcasts, learning what I could learn, understanding that everybody has a story behind the world that they live in and the things that they experience. But what stood out to me the most was that every person's story I was listening to was they went through something and they turned it into something greater. And so I went down this road of what is healing and found podcasts. I ended up manifesting my way into a certified psychic mediumship course. And I thought at the very least, I don't know how this is going to work for me, but maybe I could find a way to connect my aunt who had passed. And what I learned throughout that is intuition isn't just messages from those who have crossed over on the other side. Intuition is this ability we all have within us, this innate, intrinsic birthright gift 
that is guiding and leading us every single day in different ways. And when you can connect to that, it helps you to understand a bigger picture that is eventually going to be something greater in your life. So I started showing up online and doing this crazy thing after being isolated for a year and a half, two years, I showed up and said, Hey guys, I'm doing this weird thing. You're never going to guess. You're never going to, you're just going to be shocked. I'm doing readings. And I started showing up online and just pulling cards and offering people readings. And I realized that this was really helping them. And not only was this helping them, but it was helping me. I was connecting to people who were finding solace and understanding that their loved ones were actually at peace or finding guidance to help them see something in a bigger way than they were before. I continued to go on to then offer workshops and travel for seminars and retreats and all the things to help me go deeper with my healing gifts. I took an incredible fascination to psychology and understanding human behavior and, and no, by no means am I an expert, but it really helped me to then continue to build this bridge between how this physically applied in our lives and how this metaphorical, um, metaphysical, incredible, magical experience truly wasn't just for mystics or people who were in the woo-woo world of energy, that this was really, truly all for us. These energy, this, this language, this ability runs through us every single day. It's the smoke alarm that tells you, "Mm, I probably shouldn't do that. Or I think I could probably do that. That is your intuition or in what others call it your consciousness. So it's really learning how to receive the messages from your consciousness. As I continue to grow to this present day, I have built a multiple six-figure coaching business on helping people transform their lives through understanding energy and intuition. What I realize the most is that everything in our lives truly happens for a reason. Our, your reality will radically shift when you heal what you cannot control, love the steps you've walked, and know that we might not always be able to see what we experienced in, in certain... We might not always be able to see why, sorry, there we go. We experienced certain things, but it truly was the recipe for something greater. Not only was that just this beautiful circle moment for me and how these podcasts were applying to my life, but now four, four years later, six years later, it has become something so much greater led with service. So changing your life is about healing and shifting your energy. Truly. I'm sure at this point, if you're into all things personal development and you're here in this beautiful experience that you understand that everything in our life is based off of perception, that how we view one thing may not in fact be actually how it is or how someone else may view something may not be how we see it, right? So it's all about the depth of your perception. And beyond that, how to remove yourself from that perspective. This is where self-awareness comes in and step out of the story, step out of the thoughts, step out of the energy and be able to see something and experience something greater than where you are. If you're someone who digs into um, meditation, then you understand that meditation, the art of it is to truly remove yourself from the current experience, whether you're doing it to heal something or just manifest or become more present and aware. It's about tuning out the noise of the world and going within. So I'm going to invite you for a moment here with me to just close your eyes for a second and just take a nice, big, deep breath in and exhale and let it go. Now, what you've done right now, keep following your breath. We're only going to be here for a moment with your eyes closed, following your breath in and out. What you have just done is separate yourself from the day of listening to all the incredible people and tuning out from all the things happening around you. And you brought yourself back into a space of solace. Even if your mind is racing, wanting to know why you're doing this or what the value is or what else you could be doing or all the things else that you could be thinking of, your breath is right now neutralizing those very thoughts. And the more you focus on the breath, the more you tune out the noise of the world. And you can open your eyes right there in that very moment, closing your eyes and just breathing and just listening to my voice. You have shifted a pattern within yourself. What do I mean by that? 
everything we do is based off of patterns and habits. And when you want to change your life, you want something greater, you want something different, you want something healed, you want change in whatever way. It is about learning how to pause, stop, and reframe. And in this moment where I'm not sure at what point in the day that you're seeing this and connecting with me, but you've probably already watched a few different speakers, if not several. And so your mind is on this place of just automatically listening and listening and listening and writing notes and consuming and taking all the goodness in that everyone had to offer. But in that moment, you paused and you stopped to center yourself back into you. Because TA today created a habit for you, right? A habit of going through and getting all the good juicy bits that you were meant to connect with. But in order for you to be able to stop and to shift and to change, you go through your daily life doing all the things that you do from nine to five, or if you're an entrepreneur, you know, doing the service of your world, waking up in your routines and your habits. But when you want to evolve that, when you want to change that, you get to learn to come back to this space of tuning out the world, tuning out their mind, tuning out the noise and coming into this state of serenity. That's where you find the awareness and a sense of self-control or self-mastery. That is where you're healing your energy. That is where you're shifting your energy is in this place of presence. So you may even be someone who found yourself today for the first time pausing and coming into presence with yourself. Let's go deeper into that. Number one, my favorite one. What they're all my favorite, but this one is so powerful in of itself to start with emotional mastery in order to radically change your life. There is two components to all of it. And it starts with your emotions. Our emotions are energy in motions. They are, they govern our experience, our perception, the lens in which we use view the world. So when you're learning to observe your emotions, You're learning to break free of where you were so you can understand where you are. So if you've gone through today and you've consumed all the things and you've gotten good juicy information that you can't wait to put into action, in that moment of pausing, you may have been someone whose mind was thinking a hundred different things or who struggled to actually just pause and center and find a sense of peace. And if that was you, It means that there's some sort of disruption taking place in your energy, whether it's emotions under the surface that are governing the show. You may be someone who's in this place, hypervigilant to learn all the things so you can get yourself out of a place that you're in. There's nothing wrong with that, by the way. You may be someone who's sat back and relaxed and enjoying taking all the things in from a different place or perspective, right? Everyone comes into everything with different experiences. But my point in this is that For those of you who are in that place where you are more in that hypervigilant state or that more reactive space, this is so valuable to you because I'm sure you want to be that person who's sitting back and relaxing and enjoying this and being able to go through it saying, Ooh, this is really good for me right now. And this will be really good for me later. And knowing what that difference looks like for you versus I've got to apply this all right now. So having that sense of emotional mastery allows you to become the observer of your reality. And you can't change what you do not know needs to change. So when you can stop and observe, it allows you to be able to see things differently, where you see something as a problem might actually be a lesson or an opportunity to learn and listen, right? Or it could be a validation of something you've overcome that was so much worse way back here in your timeline of your life. So observing your emotions and observing yourself gives you this ability to see a new way of being. And that applies to then being able to decipher the meaning, the meaning of your emotions, of what's taking place. Emotions are like codes, carrying memories, desires, and experiences. And so it's always really important to stop and pause and ask yourself, what does this emotion mean for me right now? What did they mean? What do they mean? Are they even mine? 
This is my favorite one. For any of you who are at home with your spouse or going home to your spouse or will see your spouse later or your kids or somebody, a friendship, whatever, another person, and you go into that conversation, you greet them, you say, hello, you're happy, you're excited, you're, you know, you're neutral, you're something, you're neutral or something greater. And all of a sudden something clicks and it washes over and you feel frustration. Like you just got to clean the house or do the things or get stuff out of the way. That might not be your energy. And by pulling back and becoming the observer of your emotions, ooh, all of a sudden I feel frustrated, but the person's walking through and they have a smile on their face and they're excited to see you too. But all of a sudden you are frustrated and you weren't that way before. Now you can observe, oh, I'm feeling frustrated all of a sudden. What does that mean to me? Is that even mine? Because if it was all of a sudden, more likely than not, it is not. And the beauty is that you can now have this ability to differentiate that what could have been a story you took on where you see this person, you're like, oh, now I'm all frustrated and, oh, they're rubbing me the wrong way and they're doing this, they're doing this, they're doing this. Now is an opportunity to lead with what we'll get into with compassion. Oh, if I wasn't feeling this way and now all of a sudden am, Maybe I get to take a moment to nurture this person or help this person or listen to this person or, you know, give them a bigger hug or do whatever may need to be done to help them with what could be frustration. Maybe it's not frustration. It's actually deep seated anger that they're carrying and it's coming up as frustration, whatever it could be. But the point is that you don't have to go down all the blocks and stairs of what exactly is this. It's just about becoming more self-aware. And this is one of those key components that really set you up. Again, this gets to be a habitual thing for you, setting you up to become the observer in your life in a bigger way. Let's carry on. Number two is learning the art of compassion. So as you become more aware of your emotions, one, particularly for you, because it allows you to have more grace with yourself. Okay. I see where these bills and these unexpected things and checks are showing up and I don't know how I'm going to pay them. I don't know where they're going to come from. And I don't know why this is happening to me. Where is this emotion coming from? And is it in fact mine? Okay. Yes, it is mine. It's coming from not feeling secure. It's coming from not feeling safe with money or confident that I can make this work. All right. Now we've, we've observed the emotional component to it. And now we can lead with more compassion. I am now able to have more compassion and love for myself because I'm not letting these thoughts now go on autopilot and tell me all these stories of how this is never going to get solved. I can slow myself down and see things in a new light. And I can go and take some time to nurture myself. Maybe I need a bath. Maybe I need to go for a walk just to move the energy out of my system. Maybe I need to call somebody up and ask for help or talk it out or whatever that might look like. But now that I've observed and I've deciphered, I can lead with compassion to really see this through in a more loving and nurturing way. Same with when your spouse comes home or you go and see a friend and you all of a sudden feel that frustration. Well, now you can lead with more compassion towards them because you feel intuitively. And now because of this, you know, all of a sudden changes are probably not your own energy that they just get to have more of your support and watch as those conversations, not only with others, but also with yourself radically change the way that you can see and experience things in a totally new lens and way. That is one of the most incredible things. If you take anything away from today, I hope it is these two components because radically changing your life. I mean, like quantum leaps, manifestations overnight, that kind of shifts, you know, reach for the stars over the fence, world series kind of stuff. These two components are the foundation of you being able to truly experience those changes in your life. All right. Number three. Now this is where you really get to get into that presence. So just like in the beginning, we paused and we closed our eyes and disconnected from the world around us. And we slowed down to our breath. What you did was you came into presence with yourself. 
So as we are out there hustling and grinding, grinding and finding all the things that we want to do and create and experience and have all the, the beautiful of everything, we want it all. We get to have it all. There's no this or that. What pulls people out of the experience to actually be able to effectively create and have change in their life is because they become disconnected from what's alive. We forget that once upon a time, that version of us that exists today was also one that we prayed for, was also one that we wanted to manifest. And here we sit now totally blind to it, searching and reaching for all these other things outside of ourselves. And we forgot, we forget to stop and essentially smell the roses. So when you open yourself up to observation and being able to decipher and understand the difference of what emotions belong to you, what may belong to someone else and how to lead with more compassion in that space, it then comes to bringing yourself back to presence, finding security in what you are already a part of. You see, we want more security, which means relationships and money and trust and surrender and forgiveness and grace and all these beautiful things in the home, in the cars. We, we think our security lies in the things that we're trying to get outside of us, but security lies within us. If you don't feel secure right now and where you are, the balance in your bank account, the things that you have, the people around you, there's something within you that is missing that is reflecting and creating that experience outside of you. Just like how you could feel the emotional energy of the person you're going to see or you are around, um, or maybe even tomorrow you'll experience, keep it in the back of your mind for later. You need to cultivate that sense of security within yourself in order to feel it in something else right? We can feel frustration in others because we know what frustration feels within ourselves. If we're seeking security outside of us, but we've never created security within us, we're never going to feel security in something outside of us. So if you're someone who's hustled throughout your life to get more money and get more fancy things and get all the, get all the stuff, and there's no judgment in that, we truly get to live this life and have it all. It's because you haven't cultivated security that you don't feel connected and you're constantly seeking more. Again, there's nothing wrong with seeking more and having more and, and calling in more, but it's when we're doing it from a sense of not feeling secure and only being secure when we have that next best thing. That's where this one really truly applies. And to some degree, I feel like, especially with how fast paced the world is, we get to pull back and start tuning back into what's alive. The beautiful thing about the pandemic is that nobody knew what was going on and we were all put into this space of having to take time to actually just be. And for a lot of people that was either like a vacation that you never knew that you needed or was super chaotic because you never had that time to just sit where the world stopped and you were forced to stop. And that same concept applies, but it doesn't have to be forced and we don't need a pandemic to do it. It is about you taking that time to slow down. So if you have a garden that's been neglected in the backyard, there's no better time than now to go and do it. If you have children that you're trying to provide for this beautiful life and, or this family or this partner that you're trying to provide for this beautiful life, but you're never actually present when you're with them, you're on your phone or you're answering emails or you're doing all the other things, you're scheduling activities, but you're never actually just sitting, staring, looking into their eyes and enjoying their company genuinely, genuinely, all distractions turned off. You're not actually present and alive with what is alive in your life. It could be the birds on a Sunday morning while you're sipping, having your coffee, right? I just took you to a place where every single one of you either resonated because you do that, or your energy went to the idea or the vision of having a coffee on a Sunday and looking out a window and seeing the birds flying by because our energy is influential. Our energy can be directed. And when we plug into what's happening, that's where we receive these beautiful divine bouts of guidance. Oh, aha. That's what I needed to do. And I would have never have even known that if I didn't watch the bird take the worm away from the other bird and fly it over to her nest and feed her children, that she was there fighting for survival reasons just to feed her children. You know, there's so many different ways that we conceptualize or find the metaphors in what's taking place in our life, but we'll miss them if we don't pause 
and actually just tune into what's taking place right now, because where we are is what we're expanding from. So if you want to radically change your life, you get to learn how to come into deep presence with what's already alive and find the gratitude and the love and the excitement and the joy to expand that into all other areas and faucets of your life. If you challenge to see why certain areas of your life are influenced and affected in certain ways, it's like, this is happening here and this is happening here and this is happening here and you're separating them all singularly, I'm going to be the one to share with you that uh, they're all connected, interconnected in a very probably more simplistic way than you may be seeing it. But until you get that connection, it's not going to make sense to you and you're going to struggle to solve or resolve the problem. But when you plug into what's alive in your life, it gives you that moment in presence so that while you're playing with the toys on the floors with your kids or you're out for a coffee with your neighbor, just because it's a Sunday and it's you know something you wanted to finally just do today, you keep promising it. Well, let's do it. And in that moment of laughter and joy and swapping stories and just being with each other, it's like, oh, aha, intuitively, now I can see why. And that person may have been the catalyst because they shared a story for you or shared a story with you. That was something that happened to them that they didn't even know you were dealing with, but aha, there it is because you became alive in your life again, moving forward. Number four is practicing awareness, your awareness, your access point to what's not working and what is both physically as well as spiritually. So your awareness. So applying these, these previous three steps gives you the ability to see things in a bigger way. This is more of getting into the big picture experiences. So if you're big on visualization and meditation and connecting, we're going to talk about that in number five practicing awareness is absolutely key. This isn't something that you're going to listen to and take notes from. And all of a sudden tomorrow, your life is going to change. And it's just going to be an obvious thing, pulling yourself out of the emotions of your life and really deciphering them and sitting with them and comprehending what their meaning could be or dismissing them if they just mean nothing, or they're just not, that doesn't make sense to you at that time. Cause we don't always have to analyze everything that comes up for us, believe it or not. Um, practicing that it is truly an art. It is a lifestyle. It is a skill, but just like if you want to evolve in your job, evolve in your work, become a better entrepreneur, you have to invest in learning new skills. Well, that's what emotional mastery allows you to do. It's learning a new skill that allows you to grow beyond the perception of where you are. And the beautiful thing about that is the more you lead with this, the easier it is for you to get those intuitive downloads and to not necessarily need the support all the time because you have a skill that you can apply when things aren't going your way or you're challenged by something or your confidence is lacking or you're thinking, how am I going to pull this one off? Now you have the emotional awareness and the ability to lead with compassion and the ability to plug into what's alive in your life, because now you know that this is going to be the key to radically open up my perspective and shift my life. And that is where practice comes in because it's not a one-time thing. It's a muscle we get to exercise. Your intuition is this beautiful muscle that you're coming back to. You are remembering. So when something triggers you, let the energy speak versus your emotions. So just like in the beginning where you become aware of it, what is it here to show you? Whose is it? Where is it coming from? Maybe, you know, maybe you don't, you don't always know, and that's okay. It's not the point, but the point is to pull yourself out of it to help you to observe it. So let that speak to you versus the reaction that you are used to. In our last one, take action. So visualization and execution. We can cultivate the best ideas. We can journal about it. We can write it down on paper. But at the end of the day, it is the doers. It is the action that gets us to where we want to be. I think of it like this. It's like a person who sits on a couch with their hand out and their eyes closed and they're visualizing winning the lottery, $70 million, the Powerball, it's all coming in. It's going to end up right here on this beautiful silver tray. God willing, here we go. Universe calling it in right there. Put it right there. And you sit there day after day after day and you call cultivate all this energy where you're like, oh yeah, like I can feel it. I'm going to get it. The emotions around it. They're amazing. I have the awareness that I'm doing all this internal work. 
but I'm not getting off the couch and I'm not buying the ticket. Thus, I will not get it. You know, though infinite possibilities, it could show up in another way, but you get my point. If you sit there and you dream on it and you never apply energy to it, energy is only ever transmuted, which is the emotional understanding of the reactions to your responses, or it is directed. So taking that action to put that momentum into place, blazing that trail and that path to say that this is the moment I claim in my destiny, where where I am going is inevitable. It is a knowing. I don't need to trust it because it just happens and I see it and I will take action on it. The next best thing, the next thing that I know to do right. Amazing. Let's go there. Intentionality and self-connection requires action to truly unlock what you are capable of. Just like how you got to where you are today, it came from an intention And you have to take action. And just like where you're going, it starts with an intention and it uh, it requires an action. But in the midst of it, to truly evolve beyond the paradigm and paradox of where you were to where you want to be is this component of learning to dance with your energy. You see, we all have these skills, these gifts, these qualities within us. Some of us feel very deeply. So we're overwhelmed more often by the energy and emotions of people. So we struggle to be in bigger groups, but then we think, oh, well, I'm just, I just got to deal with that. There's ways to navigate that and to find a balance and a harmony within that. But until you master understanding the emotional component of you and the awareness and the compassion, it's going to constantly be a challenge for you. You don't have to constantly be forcing yourself into places and spaces that you don't actually feel comfortable in to a degree. That's where we grow, but it's not always necessarily the case or it can be tailored and tweaked. Okay. Some of us get very clear visions where you know where you're going. You can see it through and through. It's obvious. It's clear as day, no questions asked. And then you take action from that space, but that's also your superpower. So if you're trying to feel your way into it through a meditation, It's not going to reflect the same. So when you understand how you work energetically and you apply this emotional component of um, being more responsive versus reactive to what's coming up to you, all of a sudden, it gives you a whole nother level of insight into who you are as a human being, you as a very unique human being. There is no other fingerprint just like yours. You are unique. So When you merge these two worlds of energy and emotions and you apply them to your life, you can truly radically shift and through intention, even overnight, infinite possibilities, everything exists, right? So as you go forward, understand that your life is a product of the energy you cultivate within you and the actions that you take. All right. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. If this is something that lit your heart on fire, I would love to hear your takeaways. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Um, I'm on all things social media. I'm sure Steve will link all the things for you, rileyjune.ca on all social platforms. And yeah, just come say hi. Let me know your takeaways. And most importantly, understand if you take anything away from today, aside from the first two, which were super, super valuable is understand that you are a unique fingerprint in this world, that you came here as a gift, a promissory to humanity and everything that you're doing, all the steps you're taking, all the failures, all the successes, all of it, all the goals, desires, all of it. It's a part of your journey. It's a part of your journey. Be here for the journey, not the destination, because inevitably you'll get to that destination, whatever that thing is for you or things or experience. And it won't feel as fulfilling as you think, because it's what you cultivate along the way, the feeling, the security, the love, the joy, the compassion, the resilience, the courage that you're actually craving the entire time. The extras, the thing at the end, Those are just bonuses. They're compliments to what you've cultivated. All right. I love you. It was an honor to connect with you today and I am sending you off. Don't forget to find the magic in today.